Lovely. If I could start, you um, have announced a cabinet office investigation into the claims made by Ms. Rangani. Do you believe her claims or do you believe your chief witness? They can't both be right. Look, thank you very much. Look, we, we take these allegations extremely seriously. I took them uh, very seriously when they were raised with me 18 months ago. Very glad there's uh, an investigation uh, taking place now. Can't say more really about it. But what I can say is I'm here in Milton Keynes University Hospital focusing on what I think is one of the biggest issues facing the, the country and something that people really want us to fix. And that is how we come out of COVID, not just with our economy open, more open than any other uh, society economy in, in Europe, but how we deal now with the COVID backlogs, particularly in healthcare. Six million people waiting for, for treatments. Uh, that number, I've got to tell people, sadly, is going to rise. It's going to keep, it's going to go up. So we've got to use absolutely everything in our toolbox uh, to fix the backlogs. Investment, massive investment that we're making, but also new technology. And so here at me at Melbourne Keynes University Hospital, I've been looking at robotic surgery. I've been got some, some footage of that. That can help to speed up procedures. It can uh, protect patients, can give them better outcomes, but also enable surgeons to do more. And a huge numbers of people are waiting uh, for those types of procedure. That's in, addition, that's in, addition, Very that's in addition to what we're doing, just quickly, in addition to what we're doing on, on diagnostics hubs uh, and, of course, on the massive investments that we're making in staff. Just back on this right, Arnie, do you believe that Mark Spencer can stay in his job while this investigation is going on? I think really, you, you we, we, uh, just get back to the key point, that this is something I take personally extremely seriously. I took it very seriously 18 months ago. Uh, we must wait and see what the uh, investigation uh, produces. But if I can just go back uh, by your leave uh, to what we're, we're doing here, uh, this is believe me, a problem that we need to, to, to fix. And I do think that there probably isn't a family in the, in the country that hasn't, doesn't know somebody who's had their, their treatment delayed because of, because of COVID. Across the country, millions of people didn't come forward for treatments. We have people waiting for, for, for cancer treatments, for all sorts of things, for, for surgery. We have to fix it. So, the, so, di so, so, di so diagnostics, diagnostics, uh, community diagnostics hubs, robotic surgery, uh, drive-by cancer screen, all those types of yeah. things we're doing. But above all, you need to make the investment in the staff. 44,000 okay. well, more people in the NHS on, on, now on than there were in 2020. And that, and that is an approach that we're going to continue. We've still got some restrictions, testing requirements on, on travel for COVID. Yes. What, what has anything been decided on what the future of that will be? So, very important point. We have, thanks to the tough decisions, the, the big calls that we made, and, and I think most people would agree that we got the big calls right in, uh, in this terrible struggle against, against COVID. Uh, we have the most open economy and, and, and society in Europe. And, and although we have to be cautious, uh, we are now moving through uh, the Omicron wave. And, and you can see uh, the figures are starting to get better. So what we're doing on, on travel, uh, to show that this country is, is open for business, open for travellers, you, you will see uh, changes so that people arriving no longer uh, have to take uh, have to take tests if they've been vaccinated, if they've been double vaccinated. Is it a big week for you? Uh, Sue Gray report is due out. Can you guarantee that no more embarrassing allegations about alleged breaches of lockdown within Downing Street will come out before that report is published? What I can guarantee is that this government is focused 100% on dealing with the big problems that we have, but on the super and I do think I, I know that. Do I you know, think change is now inevitable in, in Downing Street after that report has come out, specifically on the super report? I know that you know. I perfectly understand people want to ask questions of, about that. I think you, you, you've got to wait for for that to, to come out. But what I will say, I, this government is focused on the stuff that I think people want us to focus on, and we've come through COVID faster than most other European countries, thanks to some of the decisions we, we took, thanks to our incredible NHS, thanks to what they did with the booster rollout and uh, the unbelievable work that they did, and, and the British people who, who followed the advice and, and had delivered the result that we're in. But what we've got to do now is look at all the problems that COVID has helped to create, uh, the particularly the backlogs in 
uh, in the courts, uh, the backlogs across the And one of those big problems, the I guess, is around and, cost of living and, as well. Correct. Uh, can you guarantee that national insurance will go up in April this year as planned? What we've got to do is look at all the ways we can address cost of living. For, that doesn't for sound like a guarantee of national all we can do to, to All we can do to address the cost of living issues for people. So it's, it's the cost of, of fuel. Uh, so it's that's making, tax-wise it's making, shelled, it's making it? sure It's making sure that we, uh, we deal with... Uh, inflation by getting people into work, dealing with problems in the supply chains, getting people off welfare, into work, helping to get our economy moving smoothly again. So and no and, ju- and just, and just, on, on, just on, the, on that specific issue, look at where we are, look at what we're investing in, and don't forget the, what I think is the, the number one priority for people in this country. It is, you know, the NHS has done an amazing job. But it has been under terrific strain. But on the tax and, rise, and, can you guarantee and we that, need, that national let me, insurance this will This is up? what I'm saying. Okay. This is what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is we've got to put that money in. We've got to make that investment in our NHS. Uh, we've just been looking at fantastic robotic uh, surgery, robotic-assisted surgery, made in Cambridge, an amazing British okay, development. Will that, those, will those, that money those machines, through a national insurance Those rise, machines are saying. not cheap. Those machines are not cheap. Uh, 44,000 more staff in our NHS, but will the money come through a national were, insurance rise? Now than there were last year. Those, that those investments are not cheap. What I'm telling rise? people, what I'm telling people, is that if you want to fund our fantastic NHS, we have to pay for it, and and this government is determined to do so. And just very finally, another big issue is obviously what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, the UK has taken some staff out of the embassy in Kiev. The EU has not. Do we know something that the EU doesn't? Why are we taking staff out? Are you concerned about what might happen next? Well, first of all, I want to thank our. I want to thank. Uh, Melinda, our, our ambassador in, uh, in Kiev, uh, I want to thank our wonderful staff there. They've done a, an outstanding job in a very difficult time. And we do think it prudent to make some changes now. The intelligence is very clear that there are 60 Russian battle groups, uh, about 60 Russian battle groups on the borders of, of Ukraine. Uh, the plan for a lightning war that could take out Kiev is one that everybody uh, can see. Um, uh, we need to make it very clear to the Kremlin, to Russia, that that would be a disastrous step. And so what we're saying is that the UK is leading on creating a package of economic sanctions, working with our, our partners um, around the world. Might be talking to, to, to them this afternoon, this evening, uh, talking to, to, to colleagues in other capitals and in, in Washington. Uh, but we also need to get over the message that... Invading Ukraine from a, from a Russian perspective is going to be a painful, violent, and bloody business. And I think it's very important that people in Russia understand that this could be a new Chechnya. I've been to, to Ukraine several times. I've, I've, I, I know uh, the people of that country uh, a bit. And my judgment is that they will fight. And really, uh, that is not the way the world should be going. And uh, I hope that... Uh, they understand that in the in the Kremlin, but it's the job of the UK to make sure that our friends and partners around the world, particularly in Europe, you mentioned Europe, also understand that. And we get ready a tough enough package of, of sanctions. That sounds like you think a Russian invasion of Ukraine could happen and could be imminent. Look, I've got to, to tell you that I think that the uh, intelligence is, is pretty gloomy at this point. There is certainly a, a large, uh, very, very large uh, array of Russian forces, and we have to take the necessary steps. I don't think it's in, by any means inevitable now. I think that sense can still prevail, but the UK is in the lead in creating that package of economic sanctions, uh, stiffening the, uh, the, the helping to stiffen the resistance of, uh, uh, of our Ukrainian friends, uh, as you know, with defensive weaponry that we're supplying, and making it clear that we stand fully four square uh, with the people of Ukraine, and that we support the uh, sovereign integrity of, of Ukraine. And we do. Uh, but we also need to get over to, to Russia, that any invasion, any incursion of any kind, of any dimension, into Ukraine is not going to be a cost-free business. Uh, it is not going to be a, uh, a, a, a it will, there will be casualties. And I think that 
people in Russia need to understand that it could be their, their new Chechnya. Okay. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you. Good stuff.